everybody and welcome back to Girls Unscripted. Today we are recapping Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 6 called Saw It on the Gram. But first, so much has happened since the last time. You Ooh, and I, Bravo has been a blur. It literally of news. has exploded with Vanderpump Rules shit that is more interesting than what's actually happening on Vanderpump Rules. Yep, which we might see on the Valley. We might see on the Valley. So Brittany and Jax are separated. Separated. Officially. Which I thought it was a lot. I did not think that they were actually separating. Everyone thought that this was like a PR stunt. I don't think it's PR. I don't think it is either. She's not known to do that. She'd still be on Vanderpump Rules if it wasn't for Jack. Oh, 100%. And they've interviewed castmates about it. And they've been like, trust me, it's not a PR stunt. So I believe Lala, Stassi, et cetera. Oh, they all said that. I think so. Uh, well, also, do you remember when Jack said like that Britney had a stroke and then they had to go basically Jax was like my wife had this like medical issue blah 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 she had a stroke so then that was the news that Brittany Cartwright had a stroke then they had to go on to their podcast and Brittany had to be like Jax you need to tell them that I didn't have a stroke what and he was like you know yeah I got confused like she was pissed off she was like I did have some medical things that was such a good impression by the way that actually was was I know I was waiting for you to compliment me (laughs) but yeah she was like you need to correct that I did have medical issues but I never had a stroke what what did she have how could you possibly get that I think it was like stroke like symptoms but she didn't like have a stroke I'm not I'm not 100% positive but Brittany so I'm excited to see where that goes also Rachel is suing Tom and Ariana at the same time and not Bravo, not Bravo. But and just not Tom Bravo, and not Evolution, not the production company, just Tom and Ariana. Good luck. And then Lala's pregnant. Lala is pregnant. Yeah. With a sperm donor. Yeah, and she did a, a podcast episode on her podcast with her mom, and they said something that, like, I thought it was a little weird, but I wasn't going to say anything about it, but then my friends who have kids were like, no, that was fucking weird. Basically, Lala and her mom were like, yeah, we're doing it for a sperm with a sperm donor because we want a child that's completely ours. We don't want a baby that we have to share. Lala said the best thing about this baby is that it doesn't have a baby daddy or something like that. But yeah, I just feel like it's weird to say, like, imagine if you were Ocean. I would feel like my mom loves me less because she has to share me. But the other baby, my little brother or sister, she gets all the time. Oh, I would feel like my mom loves me so much. She wants another one just like me. But that all to herself. That's really optimistic. Well, we're yin and yang, baby. That's true. We're I'm also, this is going to bother me. So I'm moving this because I forgot to move, move it, it beforehand. So I'm moving the blanket off of the couch because it just fucks with the aesthetic a little bit. Yeah, totally. We don't want to fuck up the vibe. Okay, so Rachel lawsuit. I can't remember oh, why I heard this. Oh, you can prepare this. with the tea. Oh, well, I can't remember why I heard this, but her lawyers are apparently like super ball esque and this is a like not that crazy of a move for them. I do think it's crazy that out of everything they could have sued for, they went for the sharing of a video, which I think they wouldn't do unless they had some sort of evidence. These are like highly paid people. There's yeah. got to be something there. Ariana obviously said back when it happened, she saw like five seconds. She didn't share it with anybody. Tom, I, I don't even know what Tom said. He was probably like, I, I love her. So I, <laughs> there's got to be something in there for them to feel like they have enough to go forward. I think it's the only one that they think they might have a shot at. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm glad you brought that up because there's something in me that remembers Ariana saying in an interview somewhere that she sent the video to I herself. remember it too. But I tried to find that and I couldn't find it. So I didn't feel confident enough being like, well, she did send it to herself. But I swear she said that. She had to have. I feel like she said, like, I sent it to myself. So like there was proof or like that she sent it to herself or sent it to Raquel from Tom's phone. Like it was sent somewhere between the three of them. And I thought someone said somewhere that other people had seen it. I thought we got that on camera at some point. I don't, I don't know. know. Our I, podcast. I think people knew what was in the video. Everyone knows what was in it. But she doesn't need to say what was in it. For us to not know what was in it. Yeah. Tom recorded her doing something inappropriate on FaceTime. Well, what was she doing? <laughs> Cursing? Killing cats. Yeah. <laughs> something Maybe. Really, really inappropriate. Maybe. Ariana loves animals. That is so true. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens with that. It's funny because I feel like that was like such big news and I haven't really heard an update on that. But what I can't stop thinking about is that is it going to come to a point where 
Rachel, Tom, and Ariana are in a courtroom together? Yes. And can I be the, how much time do I have to <laughs> learn to be one of those people that draws the people in the courtroom? I was going to say how to insert yourself into this case. So I, you have to be a witness in some capacity. Can I get called for jury yeah. duty? <laughs> oh my God. Imagine if you were on that jury. It would be such a fun week off of work. They would not let either of us on because they'd see our social media and be like, you're they obviously, you're they, obviously going to say Raquel's guilty. So. They give, I would say they would listen to us and say, you know what? They're fairly fair. We do like we, Rachel we Goes Rogue. We compare this to a courtroom a lot. We do. Yeah. And we love Rachel Goes Rogue. We, so, we love honestly, Rachel Honestly, we're pretty fair judges, we, if I do say so. So we're amazing people and humans. So I feel like we just accomplished what I was going to say next. Someone in my TikTok comments said they love the podcast. Great. Thank you. We love that. But they and, want more. But. What did they say exactly? Gabbity Gab. They want more Gabbity Gab. Well, we Gabbity Gab well. And we just didn't think you guys wanted to see Gabbity Gab. I'm just like because you. Because we're, I don't know. Who are we? Who are we? You don't, I don't know, know us. You tell us. We can try it. I'll tell you what I did this Let's weekend. Let's try it. What did you do this weekend, Kate? I went on a bender. Fuck like, yeah. Like an alcohol bender. Okay, start. By accident. Start. By accident. Wow, by how accident. by accident? So here's what happened. My boyfriend had his cousin in town. Okay. We're all around the same age. She came up from San Diego. She was like, yeah, when like we're coming up to town to visit. I've only met her like a couple of times. Let's go grab lunch. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we're just going to like grab lunch with her and then we'll go our separate ways. So we grab lunch. We have a drink at lunch. Then she's like, what should we do next? It's her and her boyfriend, me and my boyfriend. We're like, oh, let's go. To another bar. Keep the train rolling. So we're in, we're actually on your side of town. We're in Mar Vista at oh. this point. So we go to Brennan's. Nice. Home of the turtle, turtle races. Racing. They actually went there on Vanderpump Rules one season. I'm sure they did. They did. They've been everywhere. Um, so we go to Brennan's and we're drinking and we're having fun. And then they're like, what other bars are around here? And we're like, okay. So we go down to Santa Monica and we go to June Shine. Why didn't you call me? Because well, I, I was drunk at this point and it was okay, like 2.30 p.m. Was this on Saturday? Yeah, it was on Saturday. Okay, and well, I was over in La Brea. We went to Republic. Oh, on La Brea. Yeah, yeah so yeah, we yeah. were around there. Okay, so I anyway, love continue. Republic. Oh, my God. That I know. I'm such a good. basic bitch. Um, no, that place on. rocks. Oh, you went to brunch there and then you went out to... Th yes, yeah. So we were on the other side of town. We swapped for the day. There you go. See, is this the gibbity gab? Is this, is this you what want? you want? Do you want more of this? Well, anyway, so then we go to June Shine. Then we go to Jameson's, which Jameson's is like the fucking frat bro bar but they have two for one drinks so we're at jameson we're like all right we're just gonna get dinner because now it's dinner time we went from lunch to dinner and my boyfriend and i keep looking at each other like i guess we're gonna like keep going like i guess this Man. is it they came here I, like we just didn't realize they came to like hang out with us so we finished dinner and we have a drink whatever and we're like okay and then his cousin looks at us and she's like we're trying to get fucked up tonight and we literally were just like, okay, leaned into it. We're ripping shots. Holy we're inside shit. Jameson's. There's an amazing DJ. DJ's so good that I go up to the DJ and I say, you are the best DJ I've ever heard. I want you to play at my wedding. It's a hyperbolic, Kate. It wasn't. I <laughs> loved him. I loved him so much. I said, I want you to play at my wedding. I'm not engaged. I'm not getting married anytime soon. I followed him on Instagram, made him follow me back. I accidentally followed him from the Girls Unscripted Instagram. Well, so shout out to yeah, him. He follows us, us now. Us follow back. Then we go to Busby's West to play all the games. Have you ever seen Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Yeah. I see Ned from Ned's Declassified. It was like a wild night. Oh, I was man. so drunk. It was one of those, I like, I passed out at my boyfriend's house. I had planned to go home. Didn't have my birth control. Didn't have my retainer. Didn't take my makeup off. I woke up at like 7 a.m. like, what the fuck happened last That's night? That's a great night. When was the last time you had that happen? Probably like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so much cooler than me. It's unfair. But no, it was actually really fun and wild. And I was like, how old am I? I still got it. Well, I didn't well, say that on Sunday. Because so. I was fucked up. I'm 23. <laughs> What'd you do this weekend? My husband had an improv showcase. Wild. So that was a fucking nutty time. Was he funny? Let me tell you. He was funny. Okay, I mean, good. he's not like trying to do it for a living, but it was cute. Just, he just takes classes for fun. Could he do it for a living? He watches these. So, yes. <laughs> yes, honey. We love you, sweet pea. <laughs> go get it. Stage mom. I will be your manager. There you go. There you go. There, I felt very honest. Yeah. Give it a gap. Um, there's the gibbity gab, gabbity get, gabbity gab, gab, whatever. Um, it was fun. It was fun. And that's our episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs>
<laughs> Exclusively Gabby Gibb from now on. All right, let's get into Vader Pump Rules, shall we? Okay, yes. Season 11, episode 6, episode titled Solid on the Gram. I'm loving the episode titles, yeah, by the way. Yeah, some interns are really killing it. Gram spelled G R A H A M, like we the love old a pun. dog. And this episode kind of starts off with Tom journaling. Did you? I paused it. I Did you pause it? I looked it up online. Oh, I paused it and I actually wrote it down with my own two fingers, word for word. Oh, well, okay. I'll see if it matches what I found Okay, here. yeah. Let's see how good. So here is what Tom's journal entry said. It's dated July 15th, 2023, 9.55 a.m. Truth so far. Yesterday was one of the craziest filming experience I've had since being on the show. Walking into the airport and Sheena called me to where they were sitting like nothing had happened. Prob one of the worst days to have gotten one hour of sleep plus flying. Am I accurate so far? Yep, yep. I was very emotional all day because of the lack of sleep and being overwhelmed. I feel love from everyone. Conversation could have gone better with James, but it was definitely productive. Then the next few lines... Oh, <laughs> Then this is my own note. Mm-hmm. Then the next few lines are blurred out purposely. I guess production like blurred out this next section. Yeah. So it's then probably about Rachel, I would assume. I have no idea. But then it or maybe something about production. Who knows? Yeah. Then it goes into just talking about how they have the wellness thing that day and he's feeling really good about it. And then the bottom of the page is blurred again. So I didn't really get that second section. Well, that was blurred. No, in between the blurs. It says we have the wellness experience today and I have a really good feeling about it. There you have it. Well, there there it is. I've been seeing online that people are like, is this man ever going to get a bad edit? This, I feel like him journaling, like his thoughts and how he's feeling is a good edit. Like th- he's, there's shots of him journaling. There's shots of him doing push-ups. There's all these like good, look at Sandoval working on himself, journaling. Are you saying that people say that he only gets good at it? Yeah, that he's been getting a good edit. We didn't need to see the journal entry. I mean, Lisa's a producer on the show. Oh, She's ain't getting, that the I truth. mean, they gotta do something for it. But I will say at least Tom did his journal entry in private in his room. I mean, there were cameras. They well, they showed another shot of him journaling in Out another in part of the house. Okay, so I actually have a story. I went camping one time and there was these people there that I didn't know, but they were like in our group and this guy, like we had a communal area where all the food was and the fire and whatever. And in the morning, he went over there to journal. So, like, as people were waking up, he'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm just journaling. Yeah, don't mind me. Like, don't mind me. I'm my, like, he's like, oh, my God, this is so work. this is so embarrassing. I journal. It's like just there's plenty of places that you can do it where, like, I, I feel like people want to be seen. They want to say, like, well, sorry, you know I was journaling. Well, you know who wanted to be seen? This entry. Tom Sandoval wanted this yeah. particular entry to be seen by cameras. Yeah. So, mission accomplished. Also, the, I didn't. That it was dated Wednesday, July 15th, 2023. And I looked it up and I'm pretty sure July 15th was not on a Wednesday. Kate, that's crazy. Why did you look that up? I needed to know. Why because I was like, oh, wow, they filmed during the week. Or they like went on this trip. I wanted to know <laughs> the timeline. That's a weird detail for you to corroborate. Well, but, it wasn't a Wednesday. So this is Sandoval's a liar. content you get right here. Sandoval's a liar. That's all I really have about the journaling. And then Same. it goes into. And then it goes to Sheena and Lala yep. with the big bomb dropped that Sandoval gave Sheena thousands of dollars during the pandemic because she was short on money. Because Brock doesn't have a job. <laughs> Where is your job? Where is your job? I'm looking you, every. Well, you know, no, Kate, you know it's where you not need to be there. looking. It's going to be up here. Oh, yeah. He's going to have <laughs> a cast photo job. next season. If there is one main cast member, he's Brock, working hard. For I will it. say, though, this episode, he was a main cast member in my eyes. I said that here. He got main cast member energy for sure. He brought the fucking he fun. He brought the fun. Oh, oh, oh. I have to tell you something in regards to Tom lending Sheena money. I heard Kristen on a podcast. I saw this on TikTok. Did you hear about that no. Tom lent her money like that in a similar situation? Sorry, I have to take a deep breath. I'm really <laughs> so <laughs> she gets worked up. <laughs> so I don't know if this was like if this podcast was recorded like in the past or not. But basically at the end of when uh, Kristen was on Vanderpump, she was only making an episodic rate, not like an overall rate. And she didn't really get into why. But she was like, yeah, I'm, I wasn't really getting paid the same as the other people. Oh God. So sh- they did an episode. I don't really know the full logistics, but they did an episode. Kristen basically was the devil of the episode. And everyone was mm-hmm. fighting with Kristen. It was this whole thing. I think it was probably when like 
Uh, Stassi didn't like when Kristen and Bo were together. Like it was around like mm-hmm. that era. Mm-hmm. And Tom was in the same episode, but for like one second, like had like one line was barely in the episode. And Tom got a full rate and Kristen like didn't get any money. So Tom just PayPal'd her like a couple thousand dollars. And Kristen sent it right back. And she goes, I think this was an accident. And he goes, no, you carried that episode on your back. Like you deserve to get paid for it. So I don't really understand the money thing. Here's the thing for me is, yeah, he probably gets, as Ariana said, a buzz from being the savior and helping people out when they need it. But also, it doesn't, like, take away the fact that it's still a very nice thing to do. It is a nice thing to do. (laughs) Like, it's not a mean thing to do. That's a very generous thing to do. It's just you then wonder if it's calculated. But you know what? It is. Who cares? But we've never heard it until... This episode, we never, never heard, heard about that it. He's given money. Never heard about it on the after show. Oh my god, the after show. I was going to ask if you heard what he said about the, the best homeless way, people. The best way to give a homeless person money. The whole after show with Tom seemed like a fever dream. Do you want to say there was what so he said? Much work. Um, do you? I remember it exactly. Do, okay, then you need to reenact he it. He said the best. I'll literally do exactly yeah, what will he you did. Do it? I'm Tom Sandoval. Don't quote me on that. He. I s- can hold on. I'm going to act it out while you say it. Oh, okay. He said the best. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you gonna act yeah. it out yeah. where are you going I don't know. I was gonna start over there, but I really have to start here. okay the best way to give a homeless person money in a very non-self-serving way is to just go up to them and with a hundred dollar bill and say hey man can you hold this for a second and then run the other direction <laughs> she ran into the thing <laughs> And then run in the other direction. That was, you know, maybe take some notes from Kyle, your husband, on his improv skills because you need some work. I'll talk about my object work there. You need some work. But yeah, just he said, just give him a hundred dollars. Say, hey man, can you hold this for a second? And then just and just run in the other direction. Run away. Run away from the homeless person like you're afraid of them. (laughs) That'll make them feel good. And ask them to hold something in a very scary tone. All of it was very very scary. They're still holding it. And then he got into the. Well, we can talk about it. Like the NASA girl was a NASA girl. Oh, just say it. No, it was the girl he met at space camp, which Sp- I yeah. doubt. I kind of doubt he went to space camp. Well, that's what I was saying. NASA. I think was it like in Alabama? He said space camp. I don't know. Well, he, he fell in love hard there, guys. He met. What a story. Okay, I'm gonna say this. He says they were talking about their first loves because in they were talking about <laughs> Brock's <laughs> hilarious story in the episode, which we'll go <laughs> back to where he fell in love with a pig farmer's daughter or whatever. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> Sandoval was like, yeah, I, my first love was this girl I met at space camp in eighth grade. She had braces, blah, blah, blah. And there was just an insane connection between the two of us. Then he goes on to say she reminds him or Raquel reminds him a lot of the girl from space. Well, he camp. didn't say that until after a five minute monologue about this girl, how they made eye contact at the planetarium and, and how this guy like ratted him out. And instead of running away, he said, yeah. I do like you. Oh my God, I forgot I about mean, that. I mean, it went on and on. And yeah. I was like, what is happening? And then we got into like, do you know where Megan is now? And he was like, I've tried, but I can't he find her. He says he's hit up Megan. She isn't responding. And then he's like, Megan, if you see this, like hit me back. I We need to find Megan. Look, I'm not trying to, I'm just going to make a observation. Okay. Lala accused Tom of being the G word. Groomer. Oh, I right. was like, gay? <laughs> I missed that, but okay. (laughs) No, I would not call that the G word. (laughs) She accused him of being a groomer, which I don't have a comment on that. I'm going to stay very far away from that. But it's just interesting that he then compared Raquel to his eighth grade crush. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. Mic drop. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying. We haven't seen them in the same room. I do want to read the cocktail book because she does like drop some tea in it. I know like the big uh, famous story that's in it is there's a cocktail called Jamie and it's described as a dirtiest home martini. And because Jamie was apparently the code name that Tom had for Rachel and his phone. That's right. Yeah. Oh, good for them. I loved that she referred to it as our breakup album. Yeah. Had no idea why we were talking about Alanis Morissette, but like I really welcomed it with open arms. Well, like a uh, like a uh, you ought to know that was about Al- Alana Alanis Morissette used to date. Let me let me tell you some facts. <laughs> Alanis, you asked for this. If you don't know, this is gonna blow your mind. <laughs> 
You know uh, the show Full House? Of course. You know Joey Gladstone? Yes. Alanis Morissette used to date Joey Gladstone, a.k.a. Dave Coulier. It's and a funny guy. You ought to know. You know that song? Yeah. Is about him. Well, even funny guys can be fuckboys. Yeah. The funny ones are fuckboys. Sorry, that was my phone. That was really rude. Oh, my That was really fucking gosh, it's rude. It's your fuckboy calling. Bitch, it's I hear you <laughs> talking about me. We saw Alanis Morissette. I forget. We have a producer, Rachel, and we went a long time. Do you remember when we saw her? She was Wasn't fantastic live. Yes! Uh, yeah, I, I did know that she was performing there. Oh, God. What a, a Third Eye Blind was there. I've seen Third Eye Blind. Oh, it's amazing. We're really leading into the Gabby Gab. You asked for it. <laughs> there was also, what I thought was interesting, was I did pause when they went over the sheet of her like book chapters. As I would expect nothing less. And the devastation section uh, there was a drink called Rumors and a drink called Real Truth, but then the betrayal section was a drink called Home for the Holidays, and that was when I guess Raquel went to St. Louis with Sandoval. That was sad. that's sad. Yikes! Yeah, good for her for uh, taking a making lemonade out of lemons, you know? Yeah. Also, she, also, she looked so good. No, she looked amazing. She looked fucking yeah. hot. She looked great. Good job. The wellness retreat, which I'm gonna say right now, was 100% fake. I think the instructor was a PA that they were like, look, look, Shannon, we're going to need you to go in there and like bring these people together somehow. Because when Tom opens the door, he's like, hey, I'm Tom. And then they go in the back and he's like, yeah, you know, like my friend group's kind of straight. You think that bitch didn't know what Scandoval was? I literally wrote down the exact same thing. I said, I guarantee you a yoga teacher coming to film in Tahoe with Tom Sandoval uses Google. She but she knows, knows exactly it what's going on. It was nationwide news. She sets him up for a nice elevator pitch for him. To, that I, That is a good example of giving him a good edit. It gives him the floor to explain what happened in his own words. 100. Wow. 100%. 100%. And I was just like, you know, this must be so hard for her to have to sit there and like be in his corner, I guess. Yeah. And well, then, she didn't have to do much. Like the things she was saying when they were doing like – their little like back to back stuff. I was like, she might as well have been like, okay, now look at the person next to you and imagine that your friend had an affair with a girl that you consider a little sister and then lied to you both for months. Try to suppress that feeling and imagine, imagine they're dead. Mistress. Imagine they're dead though. Are you sad? Are you, <laughs> Are you sad though? <laughs> it was like so fucking forced. Also, also, also the seating arrangements. Why didn't Sheena sit in between Allie and Lala where there was an open mat and well, leave the mat on okay, the end open th- for, with t- for Brock? I have a theory on this. I think Sheena legitimately just came and sat down and I think Brock was coming down and I think producers said, you stop right the fuck there. We're going to have this start and when you get down there, you're not going to sit next to her. You're going to go over to this little no, trio No, producers over here. totally made her. Yeah. I, think, I think everyone was seated I went back and watched it today and it looked like she was gonna sit there and then she I think that they were like you need to sit but she was late because it was like where is she what no is she oh, no, was Brock there Brock was, was late. late because he was gambling all her fucking money on the golf course <laughs> Because money got involved. Oh, my God. Sheena is definitely so over Brock in this scene. I've never seen her more mad at a human. And I I understand. I understand. But I also want to, like, thank him because... He did a great... He did the right thing. He's being fun. He's doing the right thing by letting the conflict happen. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm telling you, he's going to... We're going to need to take away Lisa Vanderpump and change the name to Brock Davies Rules. That's true. <laughs> but Brock... Has a lot of fun. And talking about last week, I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> was he drinking during the meditation thing? I think he showed up drunk. I think he showed <laughs> I think he was drunk on the... There's no way he was golfing and not drinking. He was a lot of fun. That's what I'm going to say. But I, so I understand Sheena being mad initially for him not wanting to be like in a trio with her yeah. and Tom. Yeah. Then they go inside. and Because I was kind of like, yeah, Brock, what the fuck? Then they go inside. Brock was right. Like figure this shit out you guys have shit you need but to figure out it's not just like that Trina yeah we're but- all friends here <laughs> trying to figure it out okay that's good oh my god that was good thank you I've been working on it that was there. good that yeah. was very in the mirror <laughs> but then when Sheena asked him a second time and was like I feel really uncomfortable and I would like you there and he said no again I'm like Brock just fucking sit with her dude just do it Brock but again that's why I think producers were like mm, Brock don't do it don't do it Brock <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, Sheena we've got a whole thing and also I say this later too I it also makes me wonder what Brock's relationship with Sandoval is. They well, he wants them to be friends. I'm again. starting to question: are are they like good bros? Because the way Brock behaved this episode, it made it seem like they are tight bros. I think, and I actually wrote this down more towards the end of the episode, but 
people are counting out Sheena a lot in Scandaval, and I've always felt that way, and we'll talk more about this at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people forget that besides Tom, Ariana, and Raquel, Sheena was the closest to all of them. Sheena. Sheena mm -hmm. was really good friends with Ariana, really good friends with Raquel, and friends with Tom Sandoval. So by default, Brock was friends with them too. Like They hung out all the time, and yeah. Brock is not from here. Brock doesn't have any friends Where's in he LA. From? New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my accent's not from quite the pig there. farm. Like he moved to LA to be with Sheena. Yeah. He doesn't have many guy friends. Like that's his crew. I get it. I get it. I don't know. I, do I agree with it? Uh, maybe not, but I get it. We'll circle back when we get to the gondola scene because yeah. that's where my Ugh, my jaw that. kind of dropped. I also. Okay, well, how did you feel about the fucking horror movie flashbacks they did? I wrote, um, flashbacks are fun, period. That's all I did. These were not fun to me. I, I felt like I was watching Carrie. It was very scary, and I think <laughs> one of them, I got goosebumps, and I wrote that down, and I was like, am I about to start my period? Like, it's a really weird <laughs> thing to get goosebumps over. But they were, they were fun. I was like a good flashback. I just feel like the whole... Sheena and Tom friendship storyline is such a fucking stretch. Like they're acting like they were like these amazing is ear. What's the word where like you can't separate someone codependent. Oh, I was going to say irreparable. Am I'm I going, a, am I having I'm a, having a stroke? stroke? <laughs> like it, where you can't, it's like separate inseparable. inseparable. Oh my God. I don't know why that was so difficult, <laughs> but I knew it was off, but I didn't know how. Okay. Take two. I'm they're gonna, acting like, they're these two inseparable, like, best friends. And then, and I always was like, we're really not good friends. Then when they showed the flashback of all the scenes between Sheena and Tom, they weren't even real scenes. They were not real scenes. They were fake scenes from season fucking one when Sheena had no other friends. But here's the thing. Tom, this is my stance. Court. Tom is using Sheena because she's the weakest pawn and she'll fall the fastest duh and so he's really hammering into this i don't think he gave a fuck about her no and he ariana keeps that. saying that ariana and katie are like he didn't care about you he fucked you over too i think she literally heard him scream i was never friends with sheena sheena and i aren't friends yeah. when the whole thing um, it's a bad bad look and in the after show katie maloney called sheena a male sympathizer which oh, i've she came in hot in the i've show. never heard that before i love it because it's basically just saying they're not a girl's girl but in like a way cooler yeah, way yeah yeah but and she did say like look at what happened when me and schwartz got divorced all of a sudden sheena and schwartz are best friends which was a good point great we, point we never saw them as friends before the divorce great and great, it was like great point i'm just trying to help one of my best friends right. get on its feet again Right, right. Sheena was Katie's bridesmaid, not Tom's. Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird to think about? Sheena wasn't Katie's wedding. Sheena was a bridesmaid. She made it? Maid. She made the cut. Wow. Because they were good that season. A every, it literally is. And Ariana poster. was Tom's groomsman. Oh, that's right. That's right. God. And then this kind of does, you know, go into that, the next scene where it's Katie and Ariana, and they're in the backyard, and they're eating lunch, and they Ariana just, like, reinforces the fact that I'm not going to be friends with anyone that's friends with Sandoval and harsh or not. She's 38 years old. Okay. Oh, she looks so good. Who, but <laughs> yes, but I'm just saying like, who has time for that shit? Like at 38 years old, I wouldn't want to be in the same friend circles as my ex-boyfriend either. And then Katie's like, yeah, I'm a good judge of character, which is sort of true. I think Katie well, I go back and forth. And Katie is a girl's girl, I think. Because I think she's on the, like, train with Ariana. Ariana can say no wrong, do no wrong, whatever Ariana thinks. If it has anything to do with Tom Sandoval, she will crush it and kill it. And he is satanic. Which I think is, like, a girl's girl. But she's also very judgmental. So if you, like, veer off the path of that, she will show her wrath. But has she been wrong in her judgments? Well, okay, but she was really good friends with Lala, and that seems to have disintegrated. So I'm wondering if, like, Lala didn't go along with one of her She was opinions. good friends with Lala, but not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. She was sus in the beginning. She was yeah. never friends with Sandoval, really. She was always sus of Sheena. I think that she just doesn't dive head first into these friendships like a lot of these people do. Because oddly, for some reason, I'm like, I bet I would be, if I were in the group, I'd be friends with Katie. Just because she seems steady and loyal. But uh, 
I Who are do, we kidding? You know I would what, be friends with Lala and Shayna. You know what I think it is? <laughs> that would be so dramatic but fun. <laughs> I think it's the difference between the people that want camera time and the people that don't really care about getting camera time. And who do you think falls in what? I think if Katie and Ariana wanted, like, more camera time and wanted, like, more of, like, a storyline with the whole scandal thing, they would have went to Tahoe. That's true. That's true. You know what? They're also acting like people. I went to therapy. Exactly. They still talk like They're it. acting like 38-year-old women should act. That are just like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm not going to deal with it. I will say, back at the Tahoe house, the exchange between Sheena and Tom when they're staring at each other, that stare down Ugh. is haunts me. Epic and will haunt my dreams. It in was both a real good and bad way. It was real emotions. And then Brock was crying. Was it though? I don't think it was. I mean, she was convinced that there was just the first time that the curtain fell, and then she saw that <laughs> real really genuine tears. Real genuine tears. I didn't see that. And also, he went into a very strange soliloquy about how he imagined if she died, and he was very sad. But then he thought about all the wonderful times they've had You know together. what? Yes, and I did write that down. It felt like Sheena was broken up with yes. by Tom. Yes. Like, we've had all these good times together. It's like, what good times? Yeah. You were in a group of friends. But the, oh, God, the way they spoke to each other, I think, actually was very poetic. Okay, I wrote it down because I liked it so much. Oh, yes, tell us. He says, it's okay. He's allowing her to get upset because she's obviously very emotional. And she says, I know I need to, like, I know I need to, like, let go of the hate because it's not good for me. But I'm so mad at you still. I feel like I don't know you as, like, a person. Yeah, you do. (laughs) I know who you are to me, but what you did to her. Sheena has had some really dramatic monologues. You and just I don't am, understand. I am here for it. I know. But then, of course, he goes back oh, and sorry, just says. Oh, sorry. Did I cut you off? No, 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 no. I was just going to say the last one is you just don't understand. And then he's kind of ruined the, the cool moment because then he's back in defensive land. And, and Brock is crying off to the side. And Brock is. Because he's fucking six beers deep and has no <laughs> idea what's going on. vomiting somewhere. All right. Next up, I have the gondola. The gondola ride. I would be Allie in that gondola. I w- I'm afraid of heights. Oh, because you're so scared of heights? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 James, uh, you promised. I related. Oh, your alley is just so good. I feel like she's here. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I feel like do. it smells like butterflies. I feel like that's what she smells like. Here comes Brock again with the facts. He says, bro, your girl put a restraining order on my wife. I think he was this fucking close to punching Sandoval. Do you think he was? Because I wrote down, man, I am shocked at how not close he is to punching Sandoval with what he's saying. Okay, you know what? You're right. I retract that. I think he should have been that close he to punching He should have been Sandoval. close. That was my note of when he talked about, yeah, when she punched. Okay, sorry. The exchange was she put a restraining order and he responded. Well, yeah, she punched her in the face. Yeah, after she punched her in the goddamn face. And then Brock face. was just like, okay, dude. Okay. Can you imagine if Sheena were in that gondola? Oh. Hey, by this point, Sheena is fragile she has been crying so fragile all day fragile is the perfect she word she is emotionally exhausted and it, and for that like emotional switch if she had heard that sandoval said that about her yeah and that's been the biggest thing since the scandal broke between them is this restraining order because yeah. of what it did for brock and his situation and like they just don't want to rock the boat there so i was surprised that brock stayed relatively calm which is like oh yeah man well your team put out that they that me and Raquel hooked up. Yeah, it was nice. I will say one thing he does is he does stand up for Sheena. Well, he because he knows where his paycheck's coming from. But he does. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. We want her on here. We, we, love, we love you, Buck. But he does stand up for Sheena, and I like that he was like fighting back with Tom. But then he apologized for it yeah multiple multiple times he apologized to tom for fighting with him and guess what tom never apologized back yes he didn't no he didn't yeah he did no he didn't yes he did he said i don't want you to think that blah 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 the words i'm sorry never he said i'm sorry did he really because i wrote down wow tom will only apologize if someone apologizes to him first and even then, it's not a guarantee that he's going to do it. But if you get broken down and he finally like breaks the other person down to like have them say sorry, he might at the end mm. throw you something small the other way. But that is the only way. And that, again, is what made me think that they must be bros 
From they the have same something, nose. yeah. No, they and they it's been proven. They're fucking tight now. They hung out at BravoCon. And <laughs> we got to keep in mind that Brock was very drunk probably by this point too. Oh, Brock is yeah. He my man's been drunk. You know when you like in a fight when you're drunk and you're like, "I'm so sorry. Yeah, I love you, bro." I love you so well, yeah, the much. first thing they did when they got to the top was get beers. Yeah. So <laughs> don't blame them. Yeah, that was just wild. Sheena just being glued to her phone looking at this page 6 thing i do remember when that photo came out me too it was kind of a big deal it was the first time that it was like the cast was like spotted with tom and i remember thinking okay that's a little hypocritical but you know what she's right it it, it was blown a little out of proportion what was she to do someone was gonna have to stand on the other side of him i felt bad that she let that affect her so much but lala had been telling her the whole episode sheena you gotta get off your phone yeah sheena this is a bit much because lala knows if you're looking in your mentions if you're looking for people like what they're saying about you it's not gonna be nice sheena no when will you fucking learn i'm sorry but like people aren't gonna say nice things to you and i i don't think it's warranted by the way i am famously a sheena apologist but don't look for stuff you don't want to see because you're gonna find it. In her defense, wow, I can't believe the tables are turned here. In her defense, that picture was everywhere. Well, yeah. Even if she wasn't looking at her mentions, I she would have still stumbled across she it. She was gonna see the page six article. And so uh, that, I imagine, sent her to her mentions. No, you're but right. But I did like Lala's quote. It's good advice for those of you who have a bunch of followers. Don't go to the mentions. That's yeah. looking <laughs> for it. Yeah, we cut back to Katie and Ariana in West Hollywood. How many times were Katie and Ariana forced to hang out this weekend since they were the only two left in L.A.? Those scenes were so fucking lame. I literally go, we don't care, period. No offense. I mean, well, and, okay, did you see the update on the sandwich shop front? No. What it's looking like right now? No, because it seems like they've hired people last summer. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I know. That's why I'm so confused. I saw pictures that, like, everything's been undone. Well, they had to take down the patio. Oh. Yeah. So there's like, it's just like nothing. And it's just nothing there. It's just okay. A, it's that just makes a white, it make yeah. sense. Okay. Because I was like, damn, it, I think it's done. No, it looks okay, like Okay, I hope nothing. again. Yet again. Yeah. Man, this is such a roller coaster for me. No, they had to take down the patio because it like didn't fit West Hollywood permits or whatever. Right. Because I had um, so much difficulty. But yeah, and it just, it literally, it looks like a nothing store. I, And their, their Instagram bio, there's something about her Instagram bio says coming 2023. <laughs> 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 Missed the mark on that one a little bit. But what oh, can you do? that's amazing. Penny, the the woman that they've been working with, is kind of giving Greg vibes from Schwartz and Sandy's. Yes. Where she's kind of like overstepping and they're kind of like, yes. whoa, it's like, this What's your favorite thing. cured meat? But yeah, is, prosci- is prosciutto a cured meat? Yeah. I was trying to think about what I would say in that situation. I think situation. it is. That's what I would choose, too. Definitely Good prosciutto. Point. I was like, that's a weird fucking question, but whatever. If we're going with like low class kind of sandwich meat, I'd probably do turkey. No, not, not, not d- deli meat isn't cured meat. Oh, fuck. I don't think, because I love ham, and I would literally say ham every time. Wait, what is, what is cured meat? Oh, this is All so right. embarrassing for me. I'm so sorry, I'll just Mom look up dad. cured meat examples. I guess that's just dried meat. So prosciutto. Oh, dried. so most cured meat, most cured and processed meats are ready to eat products, like cooked ham, sausage, bacon, bologna. Why the fuck did she say cured meat then? Just say, what's your favorite kind of meat? So I was, wait, was I right? It seems like it. Um, I take it back. Mom and dad, you raised a wonderful, wonderful daughter that's very intelligent and knows all of her meats. Okay, well then I love ham. <laughs> that's my favorite cured meat. <laughs> but, but if prosciutto falls in it, prosciutto is much better than ham. In the classes of meat, Kate. Don't just You stop. can't argue stop, with me stop, on this. Are stop. you serious? Ham is, ham is Do you famous. want ham on your pizza or prosciutto? Ham is famously my favorite food famously yeah learn 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 a thing or two about me oh like just ham i love ham easter's my favorite holiday because i get ham well that's a different like honey baked ham that's a different thing someone one time asked me what my death row meal would be and i said a ham and cheese sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise oh that does sound really good but they were like you probably get that every day in prison yeah (laughs) so so i changed it cured ham to me is like the slices anyway i just love ham i love ham i love it so much i love prosciutto but not as much as ham okay anyways the the gabbity gab is going off the fucking rails now (laughs) off the rails enough about ham God, more about Sheena. What about pepperoni, though? Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. I don't like pepperoni. Sheena. She FaceTimes them and expects Ariana to feel fucking bad for her. Oh, 
hello sheena do you remember what just happened no she doesn't give a fuck she's not sad about this why should ariana have to be the one talking sheena down sheena calling her crying about sandoval come on because sheena doesn't know what else to do because she thinks the only way a world can exist in which she feels a, like a resolution with the struggle she's feeling with Tom Sandoval is if she has Ariana's blessing. So I think she pitches it with like some that's a good point delusional hope that point. she'll give a sign off because even a crack in the door, you know, that's enough for Sheena. A crack in the door is enough for Sheena. She will kick it wide open and be like, Tom, we're, we can be good now. She's FaceTiming Ariana. So if like things come back to her, she's like, well, I talked to Ariana. I let her know how I was feeling. That's why she was sending those frantic texts yeah, to Ariana. Yeah. She's really, I think that's why she was crying so much. She's really afraid of Ariana. And I don't love that. I don't love that either. I put that here. It was a, almost a little mean girl vibe to me. Yeah. Of like, oh yeah, well, that's sad. He did that. We don't care. Yeah. But then again, she is complaining. She's it's almost like she's wanting sympathy for what Tom Sandoval is doing for her. And Ariana, just how many times can you say I told you so? Yeah. You didn't have to go to Tahoe, Sheena. Yeah. You don't have to do those things, Sheena. And she reiterates a reminder that he he doesn't like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a bit harsh, but <laughs> the truth is the truth. Let's just, let's remind you of that. How do you feel about the friendship between Katie and Ariana? I like it because I think they're very similar in many ways. I feel like it does fit, you know, yeah. like it does feel right. But again, I think Katie is a, a kind of a ride or die girl's girl that she will just yes and it till the death no matter what i think ariana can say no wrong thing right now yeah which is interesting for me it's, katie's usually very opinionated and it's well it it helps that katie doesn't like tom sandoval Shit, that's true that's true I, I i would give the asterisk of if it serves her agenda yeah i just think you know i try to think about you know in early seasons katie's best friend was stassi it was katie and stassi yeah i remember that and now her best friend has become ariana and i i do like the friendship between katie and ariana because i do feel like there's a mutual balance of power like they are mm. on the same playing field mm. obviously katie has ariana's back a bit more because this is happening but i think ariana would have katie's back whereas i do too whereas katie's relationship with stassi yes i do think they were best friends but Katie was kind of her bitch. Like she yeah. was like her lackey yeah. and she would yes and Stassi. Yeah. But Stassi wasn't necessarily riding. Yeah. So hard. Katie would ride for Stassi when she was doing shit that like we should not have been like. We should not have been riding for. Yeah. <laughs> like remember when she invited all those people over to her apartment as if someone died and she was like Jack's hooked up with some girl in Vegas. Oh, and everyone's yeah. like, Stassi, no, are you okay? You know what? Actually, I take it back though, because I actually think Katie and Kristen were kind of like, bitch, you need to go. They down. were. They were like, how would, why do you believe it? So it's maybe. Like, well, they hated Patrick. So it's all that's about, like, really who what hates it was. Who they hated at Patrick. the end of the day is who you hate most. So maybe that is what it's it was. It's dictating the politics here. But I do think that they have a healthy friendship. Yeah, I do too. I'm, I'm a stan. I, I stan it. I, I, I will co-sign. Back on the boat. Back on the boat. Schwartz hitting on the stewardess. James <laughs> trying to post Instagrams about Graham. Brock being drunk. This boat was the best part of this whole season of Vanderpump Rules it so far. so fun. It looked, it actually looked fun. It actually there was fun. real drama. There was flirting. There was drinking. I'm like, thank you. This there is were, what I've been asking for. You're so right. There were different pockets on the boat, different things going on. Yes, and, and it was a small boat. Complimented each other and it was a small boat, but we had a lot to work with. I do think that um, in terms of like Graham slash hippie, I don't really have much to say, but he just seems super duper calm and I think it's because they are not going to physically show him being a bad dog. No, that's true. Because Lisa rescued him and they're trying to make it seem like that's so messed up that, that he, he was, was put, put to a, a thing. I had to time. rescue him. It's like we see two shots of Graham all episode because those are the only two shots that he's not trying to fucking bite someone's ankles. <laughs> that's what I think. I will say he seemed very cute he's when cute. he was just laying there. He's a cute dog. He's a cute dog. Doesn't mean he doesn't bite. Doesn't mean he does not attack. Oh, the Sandoval and Lala argument should we get should we go in and into it let's dive into it head first i think the king of deflection is back holy shit instead of apologizing to lala he'd rather call it a wash 
call it a wash. He'd rather remind her of all the things she's done in her past. Just say sorry and move on. Also, not even good points about her past, may I add. He is relating seven months of betrayal line. Yeah. Lala was lying, I guess, by omission. It didn't affect them. She wasn't betraying anyone, maybe no. Randall's wife, but at the time She's she didn't think that show? he was with the wife. Well. And so there's a whole, it's so different it's, it is to different. say that her not mentioning Randall is the same thing as him sleeping with his best friend's, with his girlfriend's best friend. Like, right. that's crazy. It's not anything that you can really compare it to. Like, I he agree. is grasping at straws here. Yeah, As I Katie agree. would say, find a new audience. That was not going to go well with Lala. I did like that quote from Katie. It was really good. Um, and then Tom makes the the, the <sighs> Tom makes the saying that they say in like every reality show I watch is you're not putting your life out there. We're putting our lives out there in terms of Sheena lying about her thing with Randall. And I hear Lala this lying about her thing. Lala in terms of Lala lying about her thing with Randall. And this is something that I hear on like so many reality shows. And one that comes to mind in particular is. Uh, this most recent season of Southern Charm. Do you watch Southern Charm? I love Southern Charm. I do too. And Shep is yelling at Craig, like, you don't put your life out there. Like, we're out here putting our lives out here just because Paige isn't on the show, right? Yeah. And I, I do get that point of, like, these reality shows only stay on the air if you're airing your fucking dirty laundry yep. for people to watch and talk about. And Lala wasn't necessarily airing her dirty laundry for people to watch and talk about. Whereas, like, Sheena, she airs everything. You got to yeah. give it to her. We know everything there is to know about Sheena. But for Tom to make that point that you're not putting, you weren't putting your life out there. Also, you if, did the same thing. If Sheena were dating a high profile producer like Randall Emmett. <laughs> We'd know, baby. Well, no, I don't think if Randall was like, hey, look, you cannot talk about this unless Randall wanted her. I don't know why she wasn't talking about it. Just because he Randall, was married. Randall said, don't talk. If I Randall said, don't talk about this, Sheena would be like, okay. I think Sheena would obey and not talk about it. I think there are certain parts of people's lives that it's okay if they're yeah. off limits. Like Randall kids also, are off limits. True. Randall also made... Tom and Ariana sign an NDA when they stated his like house in Palm Springs. I'm Coachella not Lania. surprised. I don't know. I just feel like for him to say she didn't put her his her life out there in the same conversation where they're talking about him fucking Raquel it, for months is the craziest thing I've ever heard. It he is did kind of backtrack it. on that. I will say he was like, you know, when I think about it, I did after the same thing. Sheena hammered him down yeah i mean which was cool because lala in the after show i thought it was sweet how she was like i've never had someone fight for me before lala and sheena really have become like ride or dies for each other i think they've bonded a lot over their kids and stuff i'm here for their friendship I, yeah. look i don't agree with a lot that they say <laughs> but i'm happy that they have each other because they need each other yeah and i don't think either one of them have really had like a girl in their corner yeah on, on vanderpump that think will, about it yeah they that, really haven't. Oh, that um, makes me emotional. Okay. I will say Lala at one point said to Sandoval, you will not allow me to evolve. And I kind of felt that because she was like, you just keep bringing up my shit with Randall. Yeah. Like, Which is so old news. My God. This is Tom Sandoval when you fight with him. Yeah, I did this, but what about you? What Remember about when you one time? Like, like, in, like, literally, when he did the Vile Files episode, yeah. and, and Nick Vile was like, you're late, and he goes, you were, yeah, but you, you were late to my podcast, dude. Did you forget you're late? It's like, stop deflecting. If you just said sorry, don't even say I'm sorry. Say sorry. Everyone will move on. He did it with James, with the Kristen situation. Yes, oh my God. Well, you hooked up with Kristen. Yeah, crazy comparison. He and in and, and every podcast interview, he's like, you know, this isn't the first time there's been like cheating in this group. Yeah. Dog, come on. It's it's exhausting. It is exhausting. And it goes back to, I don't know if it's a couple episodes ago, where I'm just like exhausted. Like, I always give him, and Lala says this, like, I feel sorry for you for five seconds, and you remind me why I shouldn't. Yeah. And that's just what he does over and over and over again. And that's what we said last podcast episode. Like, every time we think he's about to take one step forward, like, he's so close, he gets blown the fuck He back. almost made me feel sorry for him this episode for like two seconds. In what part? Uh, I think the yoga part. Yeah. I felt bad because he said something to Sheena that was like, do you want to try something different or something? Like he was I trying, did hear that. I did hear that. And that made, that kind of pulled on my heartstrings. But then, I don't know, then uh, the rest of the episode happened. I was like, oh yeah, 
never mind. Yeah, we're we're getting sucked <laughs> in just like they are. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, Brock again spitting the absolute facts when they're all in this big fight, and he kind of comes in and just says, "There are multiple people involved in this, Tom. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just about you. It's not just you, Tom. Like <laughs> there's more people in this. You really have been working on the accent. Thank you. It's all I've been doing. No, I'm like really impressed. Hours and hours and hours. Because, but that's because Tom can't wrap his head around the fact. Like, like when he's like, Lala, why do you care? It's like, because not only did you lie to your friend group, this affected a friend group. It's also affecting their jobs. Yes. Granted, he probably got them another year of their job by doing this. But yes. there, there's just so much more to it. There's so many more people to it. It's not just you. And that links to the scene with Lala and Sheena back at the house where I think it's back at the house where she essentially says, there's nothing we can do about it, about the relationship of, of Tom cheating. He's basically saying, which was crazy that she was going so far as to say, not only like, does he deserve grace? But like he did what he made a mistake, which is like just nuts with how much she's been upset with him in the past. But she says, there's nothing we can do about this. And I think that's in reference to work. I think that's, there's Uh. nothing we can do about this. We have to be together. We have to go on this show. We have to sit around together. We can't just be yelling at him 24 seven when we're filming together. That's exhausting. Like, what else are you going to do? There's nothing else we can do. That's a fair point. Giving that's good benefit. Like of the doubt, I guess you could say. Yeah. I didn't Lala's defense attorney. I I will say just the last thing I have to say about that fight on the boat is in my opinion, the craziest part of that fight is it's at the end when Sandoval and Lala are just talking and Sheena's kind of off to the side. Sandoval gives her the most abrupt hug without even asking. Yeah. Like Lala's like, well, Sandoval, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then just goes and gives her a hug and Sheena's off to the side and kind of gives Lala a look like, and we couldn't see Lala's face because there wasn't a camera over there. But Sheena was kind of looking at her like, are you good? Like, yeah. that was a lot to me for him to just, he. I just felt like he just kind of like pushed himself on her and hugged her and she didn't really have a choice. And I, I felt uncomfortable during that. I think he's desperate for coping mechanisms at this point. He's like, okay, they they won't respond to this. But we tried the yoga. We tried all these different things. What about hugging? Yeah, hugging. People Hug- love hugs. Hug- <laughs> People love hugs. Maybe Lala will love hugs. She's a daughter. Co-sign. She has a daughter. Maybe she'll love hugs. Let's all hug. On the boat, I also thought it was crazy, like batshit crazy, that Tom Sandoval would yell, I didn't do anything to you, Lala, when this conversation (laughs) started, because he even admitted that he wrote an article saying how she was douchey and she doesn't show her life out there, as he was fucking Raquel. Right, right, Like, that's how this whole thing started. That's such a good point. And he just forgets, conveniently, Yeah. in 30 seconds. Yeah, he's never, like, ever since Lala ate out ariana he's never <laughs> liked her he has never liked you her. heard it here folks the fact that he still didn't like jump into that must mean he really hates lala well, i think he was like driving he could have pulled, he pulled over i guess so then they're done on the boat and they are back to the house and barack is just here to party he's like look fuckers i've only been on this show for three season and i'm trying to have fun and he's earning his martini glass yeah oh uh, he sure is he sure is he's earning his spot in it's the hilarious i'm sorry it is it is he's I drunk love, and it's funny it's funny i love that he's drunk that's the first time we've seen someone drunk this season in six episodes yeah and also it's real they get drunk so yeah. he's getting drunk he so was it funny is, i i loved it i really enjoyed it then he tells the story about being in love with the pig farmer's daughter which i thought was so funny but i have a feeling when sheena saw that she probably got jealous oh a thousand percent and yeah. especially the after show i think that was the after show or no it wasn't the oh, show no, show he actually was they added him to the after show they to did talk add about him to the that. after show yeah. with the pig farmer also Talk about business opportunity. He should open a sandwich shop called the Pig Farmer's Dada. Wow, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Sheena would not have that, though. No, no. But anyway. I'll no. Be 5%. You think Sheena's going to open a restaurant that's not about her? No. And yeah, <laughs> Sheena would be jealous of the Pig Farmer's Dada. She's daughter. definitely jealous of the Pig Farmer's Dada. She's like, what's her name? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you follow her on Instagram? Where is she now? We don't know. Find he said that in the girl. after show he doesn't know. Damn. Then we go back to Sheena talking about the fan photo, her and Lala. Lala essentially says we got to forgive Sandoval. Lala says like what you had mentioned earlier, like we can't keep, you know, being this way to this guy day in and day out. So does that feeling bid the same for Randall? Like if she's saying we sh- we all need to be able to, you know. Here's the answer. 
because you know she's not filming with Randall. Yeah, no, you're actually spot on with that. She's not forced to be in a room with Randall. I do think they don't have to go on vacations. They don't go have to go to Lake Tahoe on a boat to the Grizzly Bear Mountains. Like they don't, they don't aren't they don't have to do that. She even says she doesn't even think about him unless she drops open unless he drops ocean off. I do think you're you're very right about it's like the underlying thing in that conversation that we didn't hear but that was there is that she's talking in terms of Vanderpump rules. But then they do that talking head of her saying like Ariana needs to pull her head out of her ass. And then that happens. But I think that talking head interview is from weeks Me like too. Later. I think that's a, a, a reaction to something else. Yeah, me too because that's the first time in the episode she's wearing, wearing a different that. outfit. Mm-hmm. She's wearing a different outfit in that talking head so I think that is totally in reaction to something else. Also why are they using the fact that Ariana is booking stuff against her when they made money too? Sheena's podcast blew up. Send it to Daryl blew up. They had the Uber One commercial. They weren't fucking bitching about Ariana when they're singing yeah. Uber One for you. Like, like, let's be fucking real here. Just because Ariana chose to not sulk and cry, but instead decided I'm going to become a boss bitch and get my fucking bag. Well, and that was filmed. The commercial was filmed in May and this trip was in June. There you go. Good, so, good insight. Like, yeah. like why should sh- her feelings be minimized because she decided to not be a victim like Sheena? Well, and Sheena, <laughs> it didn't look great for Sheena in this moment for her to mention like the dancing with the stars. Uh, Sheena, what about me, Marie? Uh, what? When? Can it be about me? What about me, Marie? That's amazing. What about me, Marie? Well, the thing is, is I see why Sheena thinks that, but it is always about her. It's always about her. It's everything is about her. She has been the center of every storyline. Yeah. There's something about Sheena. That's what they should have named the sandwich shop. There's something about Sheena. Because she's always in everything. But I I think that it's, she wants it to be what about me because she's never like, like she said in that show, like the queen bee. Yeah. But she is. The center of fucking everything. Yeah. And she's scared of Ariana. She's scared of losing that friendship. Yeah. And I understand. It's a hard place to be in. She is in between two things. And I do think it's... Why am I defending Sheena so much this episode? God damn. Well, I do think it's fair. If she really wanted Dancing with the Stars and then out of the sky it was given to Ariana great. It's nice that she was supportive. They, she can be... She's allowed to be sad about that. She's allowed to have feelings, is yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, look, Carolyn, I am 100% on your side. I don't love this, like, what about me? But I am in the world of, like, is Sheena not allowed to have fucking feelings, though? Like, she got the short end of the stick on some of this as well. Yeah. I mean, she didn't get a restraining order for nothing. Like, no. yeah, we hear about it a lot. It's overkill. But it still happened, and she's still allowed to have her time to feel that said sheena does not have the best delivery or sense of awareness uh, uh, (laughs) social awareness social cues but you know what it is the right time she was in her room alone and she was apparently it was a really really hard day while i was saying that she had been crying all day it was really tough but no i'm actually i'm with you and i'm kind of like am i fucking crazy for that but and i felt that during uh scandal too it's like sheena is allowed to have feelings she's allowed to be upset Think she's allowed to be sad that she didn't get Dancing with the Stars. She's not shitting on Ariana for getting it. We never even knew that Sheena wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars until this episode. Could have assumed because she wants to be on everything, but I don't know. I just feel like we also have to factor in that this bitch is going through postpartum, people. Yeah. Like, she is, you called her earlier, fragile. Mm-hmm. She is so mentally fragile. I think we just, got, like, let her... Cut her a fucking break, dude. Let her cry. Let her be upset. Like she's allowed to be upset. And uh, ugh, God, this is. I feel like Jekyll and Hyde. If Ariana were to hear that, I think she would say, "Totally, Sheena's allowed to have her feelings, but I still have my feelings too." Exactly. And my feelings in response to that were, "I want the best for you, and I don't want someone in your life that literally says they don't like you." Right. Which Ar- is a fair point. Right. Ariana answered the phone call. Mm-hmm. She said, "You know." I love you. And she ended it that way. And she ended she's allowed to listen to Sheena yeah. and not and not give Sheena the answers that she's Absolutely. looking for. Absolutely. That actually kind of takes me to the question of the week. Oh, fuck yeah. For those of you that don't know, we do a question of the week every week on our Instagram because we love to keep the conversation going. Mm-hmm. Our Instagram is Girls Unscripted Pod. And I don't know, I feel like I want the question this week to be something all, along the lines of like do you have sympathy for Sheena? Is Sheena allowed to have these feelings? Well, we can't phrase it like that because that's leading the witness. We got to say something neutral. 
is Sheena overreacting? The question's good. You're right. You know, we'll workshop it, and this is fun because you guys aren't going to really know the outcome until you go on our Instagram, so comment, go. and answer. Go to the Instagram. Kate does a great job with it. She posts all the updates on VPR. Thank you. I do. So if I you try. want a good news source, it's also that. That was pretty much my notes of this episode. I thought it was a good episode. I, I really enjoyed watching it. I actually watched it twice, so Me I too. could be super prepared. And I didn't hate watching it two times Me in a row. Me neither. I loved the boat scene. I love that Sheena and Lala are friends. I'm excited to see where we go from here because I do feel like we're now at a point where people can tolerate being around Tom Sandoval. So I think there's going to be a lot more group events that he's at. And I'm fucking praying that we're going to finally kind of start to walk in the other direction of Scandival and get into like some other storylines. As Sandoval said, he's no longer like, he's no longer in the doghouse, but he's like maybe in the backyard. Uh, like he's made a little again, bit of improvement. But again, 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 a scene to make us feel bad for him. I'm no longer, I, I used to just be a little dog on the street and now I'm like, on the porch and they're, they're giving me a treat and maybe now I can sleep in the backyard instead of the street. Like, oh my God, I just can't take it. You're 41 years old and you fucked your girlfriend's friend and you expect to be a dog allowed in the house. You're a dog. Dogs stay out there. I don't think he was saying he wasn't a dog. He actually was calling himself a dog literally verbatim. Like, right, he's not right. wrong right. about sorry, what he's sorry. saying. I got heated. I it's got okay. Heated. It's That's what we're here to do. Get heated. I've gotten a little down. heated this episode. Yeah. Which I really don't feel that heated about this episode. I actually... I, I really I, enjoyed I, it. I liked it. I liked it. It gave me old school Vanderpump vibes with a new school feel. Yes. New absolutely. Feel. New relationships. Yeah. New storylines, hopefully, blossoming. I have, I have good feels for the yeah. next ones. Brock needs to keep the party going. Brock needs to keep the party going. Energy up. Energy up, everyone. We didn't hear much from Allie this episode, really. No. Sweet girl. Well, honestly, we didn't really need to. There was enough. Yeah. Oh, nor James. Except for the beginning of, where are my chocolates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, some laughable moments. Some laughable moments. Oh, oh, my goodness. Well, I guess that just about wraps it up. Another great week. Yeah, we had some gabbity gab. We had some gabbity gab. Let oh. us know what you thought about it. Yeah, if you fucking hated the gabbity gab, please let us know because we'll just stick to the facts. What you guys came here for, mm -hmm. our take on Vanderpump Rules. Because someone actually told me that they think that our podcast is more interesting than the actual show. Wow. That person is my friend and I was the maid of honor in her wedding, but she did she say has that. She no ulterior motives. She did say that. She is not unbiased. And she didn't have to. No. She but didn't she have did. to. She could have kept her mouth shut. Yeah, she didn't have to send that she text. Did not. But, you know, as per usual, I always like to do a little sappy ending and just thank everyone that has been watching, that have been following, that have been commenting, our old friends that have been there from the beginning, and then the new people. We've noticed we've had a lot of new listeners, a lot of Keep new sharing, a lot of new Instagram followers, and we love seeing your guys' comments, and we're so fucking honored that you're listening to us. For real. For real. But wait! We didn't do ASMR. Oh, you're right. I have one. Okay. And I could do it since you did it last week if Can you'll let me have the honor. For it? Yeah. Well, I just want to say this is from season two of Vanderpump Rules, and it's when Ariana and Sheena go out to dinner and they're bitching about Kristen. So I okay. just have to set it up. So if everyone could just relax, we're going to do some ASMR from Vanderpump Rules. Take it away, Kate. I'm smarter. That's our queen, Ariana Maddox, talking about Kristen Doty. Girl power. Boom. <laughs> mic drop. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. I have to pee, so yeah, okay. we're going to sign Yeah, okay. We're done. Off. We're yeah. done. Bye. Until next time. Thank you. Goodbye. See ya.